Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna build an FX3 rig. I couldn't put any of this into the review I just made on the FX3 because I was waiting for a couple of parts and just needed to get something done. But the parts have finally arrived. I haven't tried anything yet, so this will all be the first time that I see things. Hopefully things go well. A half frame from Small Rig. It is blistering hot in this room. I am profusely sweating and I apologize if that is gross. So half cage, small rig. This part, this part, and these, okay. Unlike this, I believe. Got a cool little tool here. So that's cool, you got a little magnetic tool here. Okay, so this is the FX3 with the, the half cage on. Definitely not moving anywhere. Got a little bit of pinky support, that's nice. Still have access to the battery door. Access to your memory cards, of course, and everything else. Okay. Tipping forward, so not well balanced just with the cage alone. Two threads in the bottom, which is blessed. I feel like my body is panicking because it is so hot. Next, I saw a DSLR video shooter's video on his perfect rig, which I actually really enjoyed. And he used this quick release plate. Thought I would copy. It's an Arca Swiss plate. Okay, so on the bottom of the small rig half cage, we have a whole bunch of quarter inches, not a three eighths thread. Do I still get access to the battery though? Okay, I do not. I'm gonna flip the quick release around so I still have access to the battery. Uh, which means this plate as well. I'm going to do it like this. Hmm. We got the quick release plate on and then we got the base plate on. The screws that I'm using for the base plate, this one came from the quick release plate. This one came with the cage, I believe. But regardless, figure out what works with your base plate and attach it to the quick release. So this is nice. So it's nice and level and I can quickly get it out inside the rods now. Really the only upgrade that I'm, I was looking for with this setup is a more secure base plate with two threads on the bottom of the camera because having one thread on the bottom of the camera, it just rotates a lot when you're shooting, especially if you're trying to brace the camera against your chest. I have two rods, carbon fiber small rig, and I have another small rig V-lock um, thing, plate. And then the same part that I've used in all of my other rigs as a Sony NPF to V-mount adapter by some no-name brand, I forgot which. I think Newer makes one now. So from here, what I'm really curious about is if I can use the included top handle and find a good place to put my external monitor. So normally I would have to put a friction arm to the back of this handle, and which is very uncomfortable all around. So I'm gonna try to avoid that. Testing out a different part. So I actually don't have enough rods uh, to test this out. So I'm gonna take this off. And put this through here. Add this clamp. I think this actually works. Not for like super high, high angles, I guess, but yo. So if I had another rod, obviously this would be better. Uh, if you had a shotgun mic, probably still fine. I don't have a shotgun mic on me. Yeah, I think this would work. Okay, so this would be, oh, okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm figuring things out as we go along because again, I haven't tried this yet. Transmitter would go here. Oh, and there's so much weight. This is so nice. This is great. Just to recap, because I know it's kind of a mess right now. What I was really curious about is to see if I can make a rig using the original top handle and find a better way to use an external monitor while filming. I don't have another third rod, so that's what's missing from this setup. But if I had two rods underneath, and I have my battery thing, I have the top handle of my camera, I have the half cage from small rig, I can still have my Rode Wireless Go as a third audio input, 
I can theoretically have a shotgun mic that goes through here. It doesn't hit the external monitor, I would hope. Maybe if you have a dead cat, that could be an issue. But right now I'm using a rod into the rod holder and then I have a rod clamp uh, to cold shoe mount. Then I have my cold shoe thing for the monitor that I like to use, which is the Shinobi external monitor. And I think this would actually be a really good setup because you can still use your XLRs and you still have four channels of audio, three and four being the 3.5 mil and the camera won't rotate. Still get access to everything. Uh, we can test Condor Blue. It's a nice blue coiled cable. I don't like this color, but whatever. This is all they had. Is there a way to remove this battery door? I'm gonna have to find that out. Great, so we do have power. And let's see this without steady shot off. So, <laughs> yo, I'm happy, okay. Hmm, feels a bit unbalanced in the front. Uh, maybe I could do a side handle like this, uh, but I do want to cradle my camera. I feel like this would take some getting used to, but I think I would still have access with my left hand here. Maybe I will push this in, actually. I can cradle this with that. Okay, this isn't bad. It's a lot more stable than before because I got a decent amount of weight. Uh, not the prettiest thing, but I can quickly adjust the angle of my monitor, which is nice. Uh, I guess we can record a quick clip. I'm filming on the GH4 and the Sony A7C. I'm disgusting room. Um, I'm a disgusting <laughs> DIY sound panels. Um. Yeah, ah, uh, wow. This is, this is nice. Get a lot more stable. Right now I have stabilization off. I have four channels of audio, obviously no shotgun mic right now. And yeah, I'd be worried about the dead cat if it's gonna interfere with this. I guess you could rotate the clamp itself a little bit to the left, uh, which would give you a little bit more space where the microphone is. Okay, so that's rig one. Next thing I want to test is without the included top handle with the XLRs. Can't believe that worked. So there was a reason why I went for the small rig half cage instead of the Tilta half cage. I think it was just because the Tilta's top plate, can't remember, there was a reason. I feel like it's a me problem, but yeah. So this screw on the right is not flush. Okay, so this is if you are wanting to use a different top handle. And if you're not using the included top handle, obviously, you have no XLRs, which means you're gonna have to be using a 3.5 mil jack. Luckily with this small rig half cage, you do have this cold shoe mount there. I'm not really not liking this, this thing. But I guess you could remove it too, if you really wanted to. So this is the other way I would rig up the FX3 using the small rig half cage is uh, using that cold shoe mount for a microphone, using a different top handle with whatever monitor mount that I want with an external monitor, still having the same quick release and rod system with the power solution. Uh, this one also feels very stable, but it's less heavy than using the included top handle actually. So I feel like it's a little bit shakier, but yeah, this is probably closer to how I've been used to shooting. Uh, full range of motion with the external monitor. And yeah, I like it. Maybe it distribute the weight a little bit better. Like so. It's so nice to just be able to pop it into your chest. Because before, like I said a thousand times in this video, the camera would rotate. And now I don't have to worry about that. So that's great. And I still get a nice place to put the microphone because I wasn't sure uh, before where to put it. Thank goodness. So happy everything works. I gotta figure out how to work this quick release thing. Maybe I tightened it too much. This feels a lot better than what I was trying to do before, which was just using the FX3 without a cage at all and just using the quarter inches on the body. But what I was finding difficult was external monitor placement or the microphone placement. But using this small rig half cage, that's no longer an issue and that is, that is bless. I think I just found where and you do get an HDMI clamp with the small rig FX3 half cage. Uh, clamps down right into the HDMI cable, but I feel like it also clamps down on the door or like the, the port door. And it feels like it's changing the shape a little bit, 
which gets me a bit nervous. I guess you could remove the door. Is that a thing? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be using this just because I don't want to deform anything on the FX3. I don't know if I can get a video out of this because it's very messy. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. We're going to stop it here. We're going to see if I can set up a test shoot to use both setups, see which one I like better functionally. All right. As always, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day. Be healthy. Bye.